The Three Little Pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs, Strawy, Sticky, and Bricky, living with their mama pig in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world and make your own way. Go and start your new lives, but don't ever forget. Whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad but excited, the three little pigs said their goodbyes to their mommy and set off. After a while, they found a piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest, Strawy, was a bit lazy. He was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. Strawy finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets, "Hey, you guys! I'm already finished." Oh, okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. Don't worry, nothing will happen. The middle piglet, Sticky, was slightly more diligent and constructed a little cubby house using sticks and twigs. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit steadier than the one with straw. My dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Don't worry, this house is very safe. While Strawy and Sticky were having a great time near their newly built houses, singing, dancing, playing, and killing time, the eldest of them all, Bricky, was constantly working because he didn't think much of their ideas. He was the most diligent of the three and decided to build a sturdy house made of bricks. The other piglets laughed. They thought that his effort was useless. <laughs> Would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Bricky didn't bother listening to them and worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. The brick house looked lovely and like it could withstand the strongest winds. A day later, a sly and cunning wolf named Wiley arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. And he smelled the pig inside. He thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal. Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. No, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then Wiley, who was a very big, bad, and greedy wolf, showed his teeth and said. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. And so the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down in an instant. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could, but. With great effort, the first little pig barely escaped and ran away, and went to Sticky's house to hide for safety. The hungry wolf continued down the lane, and he passed by the second house made of sticks. He smelled the pigs inside, and he thought about the fine dinner they would make. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. No, no, no! Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. The wolf <gasps> huffed and he puffed and tried to blow the stick house down, but it took a bit more effort. Eventually, he succeeded. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air, and the two pigs ran away and rushed to hide in Bricky's house, which was the sturdiest of them all. The starving wolf chased them and arrived at the third piglet's brick house, 
where he could smell all three of them inside. He knew that they would make a lovely feast. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. No, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, said the third little pig confidently. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. Well, he huffed, and he puffed. He puffed, and he huffed, and he huffed. Puffed, and he puffed, puffed, but he could not blow the house down. At last, he was so out of breath that he couldn't huff and he couldn't puff anymore. So he stopped to rest and thought a bit. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb the tree. Hearing a scrambling sound, Ricky realized that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney. The piglets quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and got the biggest pot they had, filled it full of water, and put it to boil on the woods. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in a plop. With a tremendous splash, he landed straight into the boiling bucket. Yowie! He screamed and shot back up the chimney. The last the three little pigs saw of the big bad wolf was him flying over the treetops, clutching a very sore tail. Mommy was right. Whatever we did in this world, we gave it our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life in their strong brick houses. The Ugly Duckling On a little farm, long ago, lived a cute duck family. Mommy Duck was sitting on her seven eggs, waiting for her new ducklings to hatch. One sunny morning, the eggs began to hatch. One by one, yellow ducklings stepped out of their shells. They shook their wings with excitement. Look at you! You are all so cute! But one large egg was still in the nest. Well, it looks like that big egg will take more time. So, she had to go sit on her nest again and wait longer. At last, the largest egg hatched. With great confusion, the poor duckling began to look around. His mother and siblings were a bit more confused than he was because this duck in particular did not look like his siblings. He was built much broader and had grey and white feathers. What is that? He cannot be one of us. I have never seen such an ugly duckling. How can you say such a thing? That's not nice. Now line up. We will go to the lake for your very first swim. Yet the other ducklings quacked. Ugly! 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 The ugly duckling did not know why the other ducklings were yelling at him. He took the last spot in line. Each yellow duck jumped in the river and swam behind Mama Duck. When it was his turn, the ugly duckling jumped in and started to paddle too. He was a great swimmer. Later on, each time the ugly duckling tried to play with his brothers and sisters, they yelled. Go away! We will not play with you! You are ugly! Time was passing, and the ugly duckling was growing up to be different. All the animals on the farm were bullying him. Ugly duckling! Ugly duckling! Ugly duckling! Mother Duck, on the other hand, was doing her best to protect him. She couldn't bear to see that poor child so sad. But as the days passed, the poor ugly duckling was feeling worse. All night long, he would silently cry. <laughs> Just because I am ugly doesn't mean everyone has to be mean. <laughs> no one wants to play with me or even talk to me. One day, 
One of the yellow ducklings said to the ugly duckling, You know what? You would do us all a big favor if you leave. Get out! Get out! Get out! Huh. They're right. I should go. That night, the ugly duckling flew over the farmyard fence and landed on the other side of the lake. There, he met two grown-up ducks. Can I please stay here for a while? I have nowhere else to go. What do we care? Just don't get in our way. Suddenly, a big hungry dog came chasing the two ducks. They quickly flew up in the air. The poor ugly duckling froze in fear. The dog sniffed and sniffed at the ugly duckling, then turned away. I am even too ugly for the big hungry dog. Ugly duckling began to move along. Soon after, an empty lake appeared. Well then, if nobody wants me, I will hide here forever. Even though he was all alone, he was very happy. One day, he saw a horde of white long-necked birds migrating to the south. How beautiful they are! I wish I could be like them. Winter came and snow began to fall, so it was hard to find food. Cold and tired, trying to forage, the ugly duckling came across a farmer. Poor thing, you must be freezing. I'll take you home and look after you till you grow. Indeed, the farmer took good care of the ugly duckling. When spring arrived, the ugly duckling had grown. The farmer took him back to the lake to give him more space to move around freely. The ugly duckling looked at his reflection in the water, but he was amazed at what he saw. At first, he couldn't recognize himself. He thought there was someone else behind him. So he flipped his wings and noticed that his reflection was doing the same thing. He stretched out his neck and his reflection continued to mirror his movements. Right then, he knew that this amazing bird was no one other than himself. Oh, how much I've changed! I look like the birds in the sky! While he was swimming in the lake, he came across a wedge of swans. They took him along and traveled joyfully together. Finally, the ugly little thing was accepted and loved by his new friends, to whom he belonged. A boy at the lakeshore yelled out to his friends, Hey, look at the young one all the way back. Must be the most beautiful swan I've seen. The swan did not know how to react to so much praise. He felt shy. After being mocked for so long, he couldn't believe he was being appreciated and accepted. I've never dreamt someone would call me beautiful someday. I wish I had received the same affection when I was the little and ugly creature. I wouldn't have spent such a sad childhood. Why do people treat others according to their looks? That is so, so sad. Yes, from the beginning, he indeed was a swan. He was just an unfortunate egg, which got mixed up in between the ducks. But now, he was with his real family, and ahead of him was a happy life. Gatito Misifu Gatito Misifu was a lovely little cat living with her mom in a small house. Her white fur resembled pure snow. One day, her mom wanted to go to the market. She wanted to make sure her daughter would be safe and gave clear instructions before leaving. My sweet little girl, I will be back very soon. Meanwhile, you stay home and you do not open the door for anyone. Gatito listened to her mom and started reading a book. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Who is it? It's Sun San Su. Sun San Su, Gatito's friend, was a beautiful brown cat, very energetic and reckless. Come on, open the door. I cannot. Mommy said not to open the door for anyone. Okay, you come outside then. I cannot either. Mommy said to stay home. Come on, she meant not to open the door for strangers. But she was surely not referring to me. I am your best friend. And she knows me very well. Come, let's play. I have a new ball to show you. And we will stay here. 
The detail thought about the logical analysis Sun Sansu stated. Okay, but we will play next to our door. Sure, and we won't be late. We'll play for a few minutes and you'll get back inside before your mom returns. And so, Gatito Misifu went to play with her convincing friend. They shot the ball, ran after it, and had lots of fun. At some point, Sun Sansu kicked it very high. The ball bumped into a tree and rolled down the field. The two little friends quickly followed its path to catch it. But the ball continued rolling down the road. The little cats trailed it constantly. They splashed into mud puddles, ran into bushes, jumped into garbage bins. Well, they surely did not notice the time spent nor the place they went. When the sky began to turn dark, signaling the approaching night, they looked around and realized they had no clue where they were anymore. Gatito panicked. Oh dear, what time is it? And how can we get back home? No worries, I can get you back in a cinch. But Sun San Su was completely unaware of their location. He started asking around. How can we go to Swift Road? No idea, never heard of it. Oh, it's in a completely different region. They received different answers, but none could guide them home. They had difficulty retracing their steps. They struggled to remember the places they passed by. It was a long and difficult trip. When Gatito Misifu stepped on the threshold of her house, it was really dark and late. Her mother answered her knocking with a voice filled with tears. Who is it at this time? It's me, Gatito Misifu! Her mother quickly opened the door, desperately searching for her daughter, but then promptly shut it upon seeing her. Go away! You're a fraud! No, mommy! It's Gatito, your little daughter! Not at all! My sweet little one has white fur and smells lovely! I don't know you! Go away! Gatito Misifu was left outside in the night, tired and cold. She was trembling like a leaf. The wild voices around her and the freezing weather competed to make her shake more. She curled up around herself on a bench and remained vigilant to her surroundings. Suddenly, lightning struck and the storm began. The rain fell in a downpour and the little cat couldn't help herself from crying all night. In the early morning, her mother went out to check on news concerning her missing daughter at the police station. It was then that she saw Gatito on that bench. Luckily, with the storm over, the rain had washed her and her original fur reappeared. Oh dear, I was crazy not knowing where you were. I contacted everyone in my phone book and filed a report at the police station. Honey, what happened? Why are you sleeping here in the cold? And why didn't you come inside? I tried to, but you didn't let me in yesterday. What? Was it you? But no, it was a dirty gray cat. Sorry, mom, for not respecting your instructions. It was me. I got lost. Her mother wrapped her warmly and escorted her home for a soothing shower and some care. Mommy no longer needed to explain much to her daughter about why she should have followed the safety instructions. Gatito Misifu had fully grasped the importance of respecting adults' guidance, and henceforth she vowed never to defy her mama again. The Tortoise and the Hare Once upon a time, there was a tortoise and a hare. The hare was very proud of his speed, and he liked to show off how fast he could run to everyone in the forest. The tortoise was slow but steady, and she always moved at her own pace. One day, the hare was making fun of the tortoise for being too slow. Have you ever reached your destination? He asked mockingly. The tortoise replied, Actually, I'm faster than you might expect. I will challenge you to a race and prove it. Is this some kind of joke? <laughs> you are so funny, said the hare. I will lap you several times before you cross the finish line. I have never lost a race, he bragged. In fact, I am so confident I challenge anyone here to race against me. The tortoise said quietly, 
I accept your challenge. Let's see if you can back up your words with action. Are you brave enough to race against me and prove your speed? If you are swift and quick on your feet, then winning should be an easy feat. Now, let's race. The hare thought it was hilarious to race against a slow-moving tortoise. And just for the sake of amusement, he agreed to the challenge. Sure, replied the hare. Then, let's proceed, announced the tortoise. And the fox will have the final say on who wins. So, a course was set for the next day. All the animals gathered to watch the race begin. Fast and slow, swift and steady. Which one will win with such glee? Only time will tell, so let's wait and see who will be the winner ultimately. With the fox serving as the judge, the distance had been marked. And with the wave of the flag, the runners were set in motion and the race started. The fast hare took off in a flash. He darted almost out of sight at once. The tortoise, who moved slowly and steadily, trailed behind the hare as he sprinted ahead. With the intention of humiliating the tortoise and emphasizing how absurd it was for her to even attempt to race against him, the hare lay down beside the course to take a nap and wait for the tortoise to catch up, demonstrating how far behind she was and how hopeless her efforts were in trying to keep up with him. Why bother racing with me? The hare taunted the tortoise. I might as well eat dinner here waiting for you. At your pace, you won't arrive for a couple of days. The hare allegedly took a nap, but the tortoise was too far behind to hear the hare's taunts. Meanwhile, the tortoise continued on her way, not giving up, despite being far behind the hare. She kept moving towards the finish line without stopping. So, the little tortoise kept on inching down the road, and, at last, the slow walker reached the sleeping hare. He was in such deep sleep that he was unaware of the tortoise passing cautiously and carefully by him. After a while, he woke up from his nap, only to realize that he had overslept and to find that the determined tortoise was already far ahead of him nearing the finish line. The sleepy hare quickly started running, but he could not pass the tortoise in time. With her perseverance, the tortoise eventually crossed the finish line first, surprising everyone who was watching the race. The hare was shocked to see that the tortoise had won. He realized that he had been too proud of his speed and had underestimated the determination and perseverance of the tortoise. He understood that the race is not always to the swift. Slow and steady. Yes, slow and steady is the one who claimed victory. Sure, the hare was incredibly fast, however, he lost and came in.